At this point, we've looked primarily at objects moving in one dimension at a time, going forwards, backwards, or moving up, down. When an object is projected horizontally, so shot straight out, it's going to move horizontally and vertically. We're dealing with both dimensions at the same time. When we talk about horizontal projectile motion, there's a couple definitions we need to understand. A projectile is an object shot through air that has no capacity for self-propulsion. A cannon is a great example of a projectile. It's not pushing itself as it flies. The gunpowder that originally shot it is the only thing that gave it a forward force. A rocket or missile would not be a projectile as it is self-propelling as the fire pushes backwards, pushing the rocket forward. What force acts on a projectile after it's shot, it's important to know that the only thing affecting it is gravity. Because nothing's pushing it forward anymore, gravity is the only thing pulling down on it. The only thing other than the possibility of air resistance that's affecting the projectile at all. So we usually end up ignoring air resistance. We're going to pretend that most of the problems we look at are in a vacuum, so there's no air resistance whatsoever. The trajectory is the path a projectile takes through space. We're going to look at the shape of this, uh, of this path, but it's curved as the object accelerates towards gr the ground because the only thing affecting it is gravity and we know that gravity causes all objects to accelerate towards the ground at the same rate 9.8 meters per second squared let's look at uh, these vocabulary terms in reference to this gif here we have a man getting hit by an air cannon the man himself is the projectile He's the object that's getting blasted backwards by the air cannon. He's not pushing himself. The blast of air launches him. What was his trajectory? It's the path that he followed backwards and curved to the ground. Notice he didn't just go straight forward into the wall. He curved downward towards the ground. What was the only force acting on him? Gravity. After that air blast, the only thing pushing on him or pulling on him is gravity. We're going to ignore air resistance in this case. In our simulation lab, we made a couple of observations. The first, horizontal motion and vertical motion of, of a projectile are independent of each other. The rules that gauge how an object moves horizontally, so forward, backwards, are different than how it moves up and down, vertically. The time of flight is the same, whether you just drop an object or if you project it out horizontally. Because the only thing affecting the object, whether you drop it or project it horizontally, is gravity, it does not matter whether you project it or not. In fact, the velocity that it's projected out does not change the time of flight. Why is this? Well, there's a very important observation we can make here about gravity. Gravity is the common denominator here. Because there's no horizontal forces, we have constant velocity horizontally. We have acceleration or unbalanced forces pulling down on the object or the projectile. All objects in gravity wells are going to accelerate at the exact same rate. On Earth, it's 9.8. On the Moon, it's about 1.6. But the properties of gravity work the same on the Moon.
The key point here is that all objects accelerate towards the Earth at the same rate, 9.8 meters per second squared. To calculate projectile motion, we split all information into vertical and horizontal parts. Oh, then we this. use our kinematic oh, equation. Uh, couple conclusions. Initial velocity or vertical velocity uh, is always zero in, I have meters a, per second. A as soon as it right leaves the, front, the barrel of the cannon, the, the barrel of the gun, uh, the bow, it it's moving at zero Galileo meters per second ago. vertically. I horizontally, it may be moving a certain velocity, but vertically, it's field. just started to and fall or accelerate towards the ground. Horizontal acceleration is always zero meters per second move. squared. Horizontally, it moves at a constant velocity. And, uh, so we thought we'd try it. Vertical acceleration is always 9.8 meters per second squared. If it's shot horizontally, straight I'll, out, uh, that means the second it leaves the barrel of the cannon, Please. it's going to start to accelerate time. or speed up at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared towards the ground. Starting again at an initial uh, we copy the vertical solar velocity wind and, uh, zero. Penetrometer drum in the, ETB. the horizontal speed alters the horizontal distance. Mass does not alter yes, vertical speed yet, or acceleration. Oh, I'll watch this. Okay. Since all objects picture, accelerate towards picture, the ground Dave. at the same rate, it does not matter their mass, just like the feather oh, my left hand, the I have a, a feather. Vertical right height is the hammer. only thing that I guess alters time. Reasons, uh, we it got takes here today longer was of a to hit the ground a from a ago, higher height. Who made a rather significant height. discovery about falling objects in gravity Many fields. students think that the mass that, uh, of the object or the projectile, or the uh, velocity that it's projected out at, can affect how much and, uh, time so it takes to hit the ground. The amount of time it takes to hit the ground. The amount of time it takes to hit the ground just has to the acceleration and the height. And I'll uh, Let's drop do the two up here and hopefully... A ball is projected horizontally up. off of a 90 meter high tower with a speed of 5 meters That's per better. second. What is the time of flight and how far away does it land from the base of the tower? Sometimes it might help to draw out the scenario. So the, the uh, ball is getting projected out 90 meters high at 5 meters per second horizontally. It's always important to know whether you're dealing with horizontal or vertical values. 90 meters is a vertical value. It's straight up and down, so it's our vertical height or our vertical distance. It's a horizontal projection. It's, hor it's projected out straight, 5 meters per second. I'm looking for the time, and I'm looking for how far it was shot from the base of the tower. So that's our horizontal distance. The key to doing problems like this is organizing your work. I always start by organizing vertical and horizontal information. There are a couple given pieces of information that are true for every horizontally projected projectile. So I could start by knowing that vertically it's moving zero meters per second. The initial velocity is zero meters per second because it started falling the second it's projected out. Horizontally, it's at a constant velocity, so it has an acceleration of zero meters per second squared. Vertically, it has an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared because all objects accelerate towards the ground at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. In the word problem, the ball was projected horizontally at 5 meters per second from a 90 meter tall tower. We're looking for the distance horizontally that it was projected, and the time. In this case, it asks for time first, but if you ever get stuck on a projectile motion uh, problem, always try to solve for time first. Because we're looking at the same motion, vertically and horizontally, even though they act differently, it's the same motion, it's the same amount of time. So if I can find the vertical time, that'll give me the horizontal time, so I can find the horizontal distance. We're setting up our kinematic variables. Notice the only variable that's not included in this case is the final velocity. We're not using or looking for the final velocity if we have a horizontally projected object. So we're gonna start with this column, the vertical column, and try to use our kinematic equations in order to solve for time. In this case, I'm solving for t, final velocity is not included. 
So I'd find the formula where final velocity is not included. In this case, I could either look for the formula that already has T solved or use my base kinematic equation. I'm going to challenge myself and try to solve for T in this base kinematic equation. I'm going to plug all the values I know in. I know that x is 90, I know that a is 9.8, I don't know t, I know that initial velocity is 0, and I don't know t. Notice that 0 times t is just going to be 0. So I'm left with 90 equals 1 half nine, times 9.8 times t squared. 1 half of 9.8 is 4.9, so now it's a two-step equation. I'm squaring t and then multiplying by 4.9, so I need to divide by 4.9 and take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to divide by 4.9, that gives me 18.37 equals t squared. I'm going to take the square root of both sides to get the t by itself, that gives me 4.29. That's 4.29 seconds. That's my vertical time, which means it's also my horizontal time, because both vertically and horizontally, even though they act differently, it's still the same motion. It still hits the ground at the same time vertically and horizontally. Now that I have this information, I can go and find my horizontal distance. So final velocity is not included. I'm solving for x. Luckily, the original or base kinematic equation is already solved for x. If it wasn't, I could find one of my derived formulas, so I just have to use the order of operations, or challenge yourself to solve the equation. In this case, I just need to plug everything in. Acceleration is 0. Time is 4.29 seconds. I got that in the last problem. Initial velocity is 5, and the time is 4.29 again. 1 half times 0 times 4.29 squared. Anything times 0 is just 0. So that whole term drops out. I'm left with 5 times 4.29. 21.45 meters is the total distance horizontally that the ball traveled. Every problem is done the exact same way. We break everything into vertical and horizontal motions. We know our givens vertically and horizontally for a horizontal projectile. We have a vertical acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared, a horizontal acceleration of zero because horizontally it's moving at a constant velocity, vertically it's accelerating towards the ground at 9.8 meters per second squared. The initial vertical velocity for a horizontally projected object is always going to be zero. Once you have your, your knowns and then the given information from the word problem, you're going to solve using the kinematic equations. A good connector between the horizontal and the vertical motion is time. Time is the same in both cases.